All right, welcome back to the site. Today's a big day. We've got uh, we've got our architect out here, and we've got uh, representatives from Metalite, uh, one of the engineers, and even the, the president is over here. They, they drove in from uh, Manila this morning to take a look at the operation and to meet with the architect and to answer any questions we have. So hopefully I'll be able to get some more information for you. Uh, it is a little loud. They're continuing to work, but uh, hopefully we'll have a good video for you guys. So what is the B-Press using this and using hollow blocks? <coughs> hollow blocks. <coughs> you avoid the breakages of hollow blocks. Sometimes you cannot quantify anymore the, how many hollow blocks uh, got broken. Mm -hmm. That's money. Okay. Hollow blocks needs a lot of uh, skilled workers. Delaying of hollow blocks, you need uh, what we call here in the Philippines a mason. That is already a skilled worker. For being a skilled worker, the rate of that uh, salary of a person is a little bit higher. You do the pouring of the concrete, you don't need a mason. Just need a labor. So that's, that's one difference on the labor cost. Uh, the plastering works. Plastering. That is very, very tedious. Mm -hmm. You talk to all of the contractors. That is one of the most, one of the uh, dreaded portion or the uh, uh, expensive portion of the uh, hollow block. The plastering. You cannot even sometimes perfect the uh, plastering. If you're going to use uh, number four hollow blocks, which is the cheapest, and uh, available existing size, thinness is four inches. You can only lay that, that up to uh, four, four layers. Once you lay that five to six, it tends to sway. And therefore, if it is swaying, you have a thick, you have a thick plastering here and thin, thin plastering here. On the other side, it's reverse. So you're trying to perfect something that is not perfect. So the plastering works. Of course, when you do plastering, once you're up there on, on the upper part, uh, the falling mortar, uh, sometimes, most of the time, they don't get it anymore. So it, 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 it uh, remains there getting solidified. While, you, while with this, you put the Fisem board, you will already wall are already smooth and everything has are, are perfectly same in, in thickness and hollow blocks needs a lot of such columns like this and in, in the every column has a uh, uh, column footing what called column footing big, the big foundation because hollow blocks cannot stand on its own without co art reinforced concrete columns and the beams on, on the top of it now this one since the uh, strength of the concrete that we put inside is very strong already, mm -hmm. it can stand with even even without without uh, columns and beams. Yeah, that's a good point. A lot. Of, uh, I guess one of the main benefits is uh, concrete hollow block wall. Technically, it's not uh, structural. Solid. It's not structural. No. The structural are the columns and the beams. Right. Not well, load bearing is what. Yes. 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 But this, but this is, this is everything is load bearing. This is all load bearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Everything big, is load bearing. That's a big plus. Yeah. And w at the garage, we we built our garage. We couldn't vibrate it because they said the concrete yeah, block would fall apart if we vibrated. Yeah, because especially after sometimes if you get the uh, hollow blocks from uh, because hollow blocks here in the Philippines is a uh, backyard industry. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone can do hollow blocks. Uh, sometimes other manufacturers with one bag of hollow blocks they can do 100 to 110 pieces. So these are the ones that when you fabricate them, have them cured for around two or three days, and you lift them. You just merely by lifting, sometimes it already breaks. Now you buy the, the expensive ones, uh, they can produce around 70 to 80 pieces per one bag. Those are those are strong, but they're they're expensive. They're expensive. Because we've been um, trying to use the ACC, so ACC hollow block. AAC. AAC. Uh, uh, lightweight, lightweight concrete. Lightweight concrete. They just, they will deliver. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. and so the, another big thing for us was, how could we bring that, that many hollow blocks up there? We were using horses for three months now. But the horses got too expensive. <laughs> yeah. So now the architect's making these guys bring it up by themselves. 
and the cement and the gravel, the sand. Well, because they didn't have that much job anymore. If we had, so well, of, if we had to bring Apollo Block 2, I mean, that's a giant. By, by, by doing so much uh, traveling and lifting, uh, double uh, handling of hollow blocks, the more it is uh, prone to, to breakage. Break uh, by the time we are here, it's already half of the hollow block is broken. Possibly, yeah. So this, I think this solution... I think we make a good decision in deciding. When, when this uh, technology was, this was really invented for, for drywall systems, especially in other countries, but we're in the Philippines. Uh, drywall is not that very much uh, accepted in the Filipino cultural acceptance. So what we did then, we tried to, to, to improve the, the technology by adapting to the uh, culture or uh, the market uh, here in the Philippines. So we pour concrete. But we pour concrete, it will make it a fencing. But we were able to eliminate the, the columns and the beams, and the plastering works and other other works. So it became competitive against conventional conventional construction. Now this, when we first brought this technology in the Philippines way back 2000, we hardly had any customers. But now, ah, there's no more problem. Now you, you did a lot of uh, commercial buildings like uh, Donald's, Donald's, Starbucks, Starbucks uh, KFC, Burger King. Now we've got a 7-Eleven, Dali, Alpha Mart, uh, some religious sectors, uh, Watchtower, Mormons, Iglesia uh, ni Cristo, nagawa na namin silang structures. And, and bragging aside, sorry, this, this product is very versatile for the reason that houses, school buildings, commercial buildings, uh, schools, temporary facilities, offices, as long as we have the design and we design it accordingly, but not all we can do. The, those, those very high warehouses are not possible anymore. In, in those cases, we integrate heavy gauge, then this will be the walls. Still, it, make it, it, makes, it, it makes the building lighter and faster. In California, I believe this one is uh, very prevalent. Yeah, like I can, I can speak from Missouri and Central Central United States. <laughs> They're still heavily in using uh, wood, wood, wood and drywall. Yeah. But but uh, light gauge steel is, is slowly slowly mm -hmm. making an increase. But they still use drywall. Yeah. 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 We have, we have a lot of projects here in the Philippines that are also drywall, most, but most of the owners are foreigners because uh, they got used to it, to those kind of houses. Some are Filipinos but, were, uh, but live in the United States for quite some time and they learn to accept it. Uh, the likes of those fast food chains, McDonald's. Seven we've, we've been uh, they've been our uh, they've been our customer for several years. They will not uh, keep on patronizing or using this technology without any advantage. To I would like to think they saw an advantage to this. That's why they're using it repeatedly. Because for one thing, we, uh, right from from the horse's mouth, they were able to shorten their construction period from conventional. So if they save a month. A month, they could already operate their uh, their store, right. and they're selling around 500,000 pesos a day. Imagine 500,000 times 30 days, revenue is already coming in advance for one month or two months. I took a little walk down the hill here to get away from some of the noise, but uh, we had we had a about a 10-minute conversation with the chief engineer only to realize that we weren't recording. So I'll try to summarize what we talked about. Uh, I just kind of went over the, my questions about, you know, pros and cons of, of the Metalite framing system. Uh, you have a rust-free um, framing system. It's, it's all galvanized and it's, um, it's lightweight. Uh, when you compare it to the, the alternative of using two inch by three sixteenths angle angle bar and you take two of those angles and weld them together and create your truss from that and what you really end up with is you know, a very heavy 
member that you have to paint for corrosion control and uh, that's what we used on our garage on our canopy on the garage the two inch by three sixteenths angle and it's it's already you know showing signs of rust um, without constant care uh, and repainting you know that's that's one of the drawbacks of using the steel truss uh, even if it's inside of your roof you know you're going to get moisture up there and uh, corrosion could be an issue but all of the metal light is galvanized so all those bits and pieces are all galvanized steel and I specifically asked them you know which one's stronger it's really hard to say you know uh, but he kind of answered it this way and I kind of go along with it uh, spending a lot of time in aerospace myself uh, clearly lightweight material that's stronger uh, is is no no surprise so the way they've built these trusses uh, the, the crisscross uh, pattern that they're using they first they rivet those and then they follow up with uh, a square uh, gusset which is screwed into each point uh, on the uh, on the truss itself and I'll, I'll try to get a close-up of that I'm not qualified to say what's stronger I can tell you what's lighter it won't rust and uh, metal light kind of wins there uh, the other thing I I asked them about is you know how how do they really expect to pour the concrete inside of the pattern of the you know the void how do you fill the voids of that of the metal light frame and so the answer to that is you use um, in the Philippines they're going to use what they call hardy board it's a I want to say a cementitious board it doesn't contain any wood it contains uh, cement and fiber and it comes in four by eight sheets, I believe, in feet. And those are screwed uh, onto one, you know, both sides of the frame. And about every three feet is where you pour your your concrete. You don't pour the entire wall at the same time because that would create so much hydrostatic pressure you know you could have a blowout or a bulge in the wall so every three feet uh, the concrete is poured and and prior to that the regular construction guys will install uh, the rebar just like you would if you were doing a concrete hollow block wall and so what you end up with is you, know, you pour you add your panels you pour let it set, not completely cure, but let it set enough so it can support the next section of concrete. So you just go through that cycle of hardy board, pour, hardy board, pour, until you get your wall complete. And I asked them, well, does, does the hardy board come off? later you know after the concrete sets do you take that off and the answer is no that becomes part of your wall it's a it's a smooth panel much like drywall except a lot tougher and you finish it kind of the same way as you might finish drywall you use a mesh uh, flexible mesh with a skim coat and that's how you finish your interior and your exterior walls the exterior walls you'll paint with an uh, outdoor uh, waterproof coating and the, in the inside you can use regular latex paint. Another thing I asked is uh, what, what we ran into in the garage when we were filling our concrete block with, with cement you had to use a piece of rebar or a stick or anything to, to get the voids out uh, where you would normally vibrate that, right? Using a vibrat vibratory tool, uh, but we couldn't, do, can't really do that with hollow block because hollow block is so, uh, much of it is fragile and it'll, it'll be fall apart. So that's why they use the they hand jam it, you know, with a piece of rebar to 
to remove the voids. But he says, uh, no, in the case of metalite, you can use a vibratory tool uh, to settle that concrete in because the concrete uh, that they use for this is uh, they're very peculiar about the slump and you can google slump if you don't know what that is but it's a, it's a way engineers measure the viscosity of a cement mix in other words it's not going to be runny like uh, a lot of the, the cement mixes here are using too much water it's going to be very thick and that's one of their engineering requirements, so uh, vibrating that in is, is important. The engineer did say that the, they've been you know, in production here with, in met, from using metalite since the early 2000s, so 24 years already. Um, and it's, I believe it's been mostly uh, commercial. But they can they can design any any kind of structure, and they do get requests for a lot of residential um, organizations, things like that. Uh, a lot of uh, he did mention a lot of restaurants, so Jolly Bee, McDonald's, Starbucks, they all uh, they all use metalite, and it was interesting the way he described that because of the speed of the speed that you can have uh, going up and, and his his example was like if McDonald's can save a month just 30 days in the construction of that building and not compromise on quality he said you know, they're making they can bring in cash of let's say 500 million pesos uh, um, I think is it 500 500 million a day or a month but that obviously that adds up so uh, these these commercial buildings are keen on that obviously time is money and uh, that works in my favor not so much the money part but the, the time I'm I'm so interested in having a house to live in after sleeping on the couch for two years now. More than two years. Not that I don't love my garage, but it's, it's wearing thin. He, he tells me that they're already, uh, they're already working on the, sec the equipment for the second floor, the frames for the second floor. So, uh, again, that reminds me of or one of the questions I asked them from the, this morning was, you know, how does that work? And, well, it's pretty much a carbon copy of of what they're going to do for the first floor, with the exception of uh, the floor for the second floor is going to be used. We're going to use steel decking, just like we did on the garage. So we'll have we'll have a poured concrete floor for the second level floor, and then. Again, carbon copy of that, metal light going up, and then that that's where the roof trusses come in. So the big questions I asked them about you know the advantages of having poured concrete versus hollow block. And and I'm not poo-pooing hollow block at all. My garage is hollow block. So many beautiful structures here are hollow block. So this isn't a big dig at all but as I said before procuring that hollow block to this site would have would have been backbreaking it, it, and it already is with the sand and the gravel and the cement but if you can if you can reduce your reliance on hollow block and have a poured concrete wall um, on top of that it's it's a big plus as he mentioned that uh, it's very nature concrete hollow block is not a structural wall it's not load supporting and you have to have your posts and your tie beams to support that load 
uh, on the contrary, um, you know, a poured concrete metalite is structural bearing. It's we're, we don't have any columns, you know, above ground. It's all going to be handled by the the metalite framing. Like this, this one is too close on the edge. So the remaining materials, it's very small already. Yeah. So might as well do it like this. So then you have a lot of remaining plates here that could support everything. And then since this one is a splice one, you'll notice there's a splice. Oh, I see. These okay. screws already connect the two plates. But okay. this one are too far for this one. So I, I told them to add this one. I see. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice that they were spliced together. That's... It's, 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 it's too long. It's, it's not transportable. Right. Yeah, yeah, the edge. The edge should, there should be one. So everything has to be consistent. Five, 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 five. Spacing is correct. Yeah, this is this is how they splice two together. So you have an overlap. Is that is that two meters? The overlap. It is. It is. It is two meters. Two meter overlap, and then it's all tied in. Yeah. yeah the cut is over here. So you have about one meter here and another one meter there. Mm -hmm. All right, that was a busy day. I hope that I didn't overwhelm anybody with too much information or I hope that what I was talking about wasn't too disjointed. It's been a pretty busy day, but hopefully this will help you understand a little bit more about MetaLite. I know it helped me. So with that, I'll see you next time.